Hello everyone, my name is Sean Borland. My partner is Gajen Gunasegaram, and our product owner is Gummy Trostason, and this is Skill Court 5.0. To introduce the problem, basically, soccer has pretty much been the same for years. The practice style, everything's been the same. Now, as technology becomes more prevalent in society, so does the need for it in sports. We see it in NBA, we see it in the NFL, we even see it in baseball. Now it's being introduced into soccer and Skill Court hopes to be on the leading front in that introduction of analytics and technology into the realm of soccer. Here we present our Gantt chart. Basically, it was just the week by week progression per sprint. Everything was performed on time. Some things were performed ahead of schedule. Everything worked out in the end, and we were able to complete just about everything we set out to. Now, there were quite a few user stories we worked on. I will be focusing in particular on two, and that's to send discrete sequences to each pad, essentially just sending different colors to different pads, and provide instant statistical feedback, which I'll get into in a second. So for the first one, we had to communicate with multiple pads. So initially, and in the previous project, you were able to communicate with one pad. We decided, okay, let's go ahead and expand that. So we would send one color, green, to one pad, and then we would send that same color to multiple pads. Then became the difficult task of how do we send different colors to different pads? How do we send a green to one pad and red to all the other pads, which, through a lot of hard work, we eventually figured out. And uh, that was the first user story we worked, uh, we worked on, the, the hardest one we worked on. Next was the instant statistical feedback. And this is basically as you're playing the game. In the previous versions, there was just no sense of how you're performing. You couldn't see your hits, accuracy, or anything until after the game was played. And there was no sense of a timer because... As time would run, you wouldn't be able to see you know, where it is because it's actually on the app. We actually were able to implement both of these things. So as you're playing, you can see all the green pads you hit, the red pads you hit, and your accuracy go up or down, as well as you can see the timer. So if you have a 60-second game, you can quickly peek over at the screen and you can see how much time is left. So that was uh, the second major user story we worked on. And here is just a quick use case diagram that just shows as the pressure sensors hit, the main function used, which is send voltage. In this function, once that particular pad was hit, let's say the green pad is hit, it sends that data over to the serial port, which records all that information. This is the use case diagram for the statistical feedback. And again, this is where the data is all recorded, which pad was hit, accuracy, speed, and the timer is also running in this same class as well. And this just basically goes through the sequence of events, which I'll let you read through. This does the same for the statistical feedback. And here's our system decomposition, which basically shows a device, which would be the Arduino and everything that goes with that. The controller, which is in Java, that's the class that handles just about everything coming from the Arduino, displays all the results on the screen, and does the extra communication with the database, which allows you to save all the stats and data that you have remotely. Here's our system deployment diagram, similar uh, as before, as you can see the Arduino. The personal computer, which is again uh, the controller, which handles just about everything on all the communications with the database as well. And uh, the persistent data design, I'll just go ahead and read this for you quickly. This system utilizes a user object to maintain a user username throughout their login time and is the only form of persistent data while the game is running. So there wasn't much to that because the database in the end is just a small part of the project. It simply just stores the stats and everything you had sends it to the database, you can view it later. And here is our minimal class diagram. 
The beauty of this is in the previous version of skill court that was done in the processing programming language, there were about 14 or 15 classes. As you can see, we dropped that down dramatically and we're hoping in the next iteration, the next version, skill court six, you would actually get rid of some of the classes for the database because things will now be sent directly to the remote database as opposed to the local database. So we dramatically reduced the number of classes from processing as well as the number of lines of code. Processing, if you look into it, has about 4,000 lines of code. We were able to efficiently bring everything down to about 950 to 1,000. And this is the magical algorithm that we worked hard on and painlessly going through and figuring out all the little issues. But um, essentially what this does is everything. It changes the colors. It records all the stats. It sets all of the variables. It sets all of the flags. We have a couple static uh, methods in there. We have a thread that actually interrupts the green and red, which is which is right here, the is green or the else. Essentially, what's happening there is the pads are not changing color until they're actually hit. So we had to figure out a way to do that and update as well the screen with the statistical feedback. And by doing that, we did it through interrupts. So we have a separate thread running that's actually handling that and controlling when the pads change and when things get updated on the screen. So that was very interesting and very difficult to come up with as well. But when you introduce threads, uh, it can complicate things, but in the end, it just makes things much smoother. And these are just our two of our test cases uh, that we used on both of the uh, user stories. Here's our sunny day. You can go ahead and read through that. And of course, our rainy day um, as well. Here's a video on the actual game being played. This is the final result of our entire project. These players are actually uh, players that came in from Belgium. We actually had a coach that's worked with AC Milan, worked with some of the uh, other bigger teams in Europe, and they came through to test it out. Here we're only showing two pads. There's a third pad on the bottom and one behind him. But due to the limitations of the video and the positioning, we are only showing it with two. But this just gives you a little idea of how the project is running and our final work and everything we did all semester. So as you can see, as he would hit the pads, they would change. One thing we can work, well, which actually comes out much better is when you have multiple pads, because as you can see, sometimes the pad would be green for about three or four times, and you can just literally hit the same green pad over and over. As you introduce more pads, the probability of that happening is much lower, so it's a, a bit more smoother. You can't really see it, but over here, if you look at the mouse, this is where the live statistical feedback is happening. And as he makes a hit, it's instantly recorded there. The timer is also there as well as the accuracy um, for the hits. So that's it, everyone. This is Skill Court 5, an amazing project. We had a lot of fun, my partner Gajen and I. It was a lot of hard work, but we learned more than we could have imagined. Um, to the future uh, students doing this project, you're going to have a lot of fun. We plan to stay involved in this project until the end. That's how much uh, we enjoyed and we learned from it. So I thank you guys for watching and uh, good luck next semester.